One of the great things about spring is your soil is warmed up enough that there are a lot of different seeds that you can direct sow right into your garden beds. You don't have to start them out and then transplant them out. You just put them right in the ground and you, you don't get that instant gratification, but you do get the gratification of when they do pop through the soil and they start to grow and it is so much fun. So today I am doing that in the garden and I'm starting with um, some bush green beans that I'm putting in the front of this bed. Um, I believe these were Blue Lake um, bush green beans from Haas Seeds. Um, and I used my square foot gardening tool, which I'll show you in just a bit, to measure out. It makes it so easy so you know how far to space everything and so that you don't um, underplant but or um, overplant. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning in Georgia. Um, this is kind of the weather you live for in Georgia, let me tell you. Um, <clears throat> it's breezy. It's sunny, the birds are singing, lots of little baby birds, you can hear chirping. And um, I think it's probably about 62, 63 degrees right now with a little breeze. And what I decided to come out here and do was to sow some seeds when I opened up the greenhouse. And so far in this bed right here, I have used my square foot gardening tool um, to plant out bush uh, green beans in the front of this bed. I have tomatoes on the back that can be trellised with cattle panel. And behind it on the other side, I actually have some pitiful looking zinnias um, that I think I'm gonna pull out <laughs> and put sunflower seeds in their place. I do have a few pepper plants that I had gotten and it looks like maybe two of them are doing okay. The rest have died and that was okay. I just, I shouldn't have got them. I paid a buck for them. And so I bought them at a little plant sale thing to support, you know, a good cause or whatever. And a few of these tomatoes came from there as well. And most of them look okay. I have a couple that look a little stunted. I have just a couple in the greenhouse. I have not started any more tomato seeds, but I'm going to. Um, I have a long growing season and I have a lot more beds. We still have to put, some of them we have to put together, some of them we have to build. So here I'm planting some sunflowers on the end caps of my bed. I do a taller one in the back, a dwarf variety in the front. And now I'm planting some honey cantaloupe. Um, to go up this this triangle trellis that I have and I'm using my square foot gardening tool there to space out some zucchini plants. I have a yellow zucchini and a striped zucchini from in my gardener that I'm planting here. Um, and then on the other end I'm doing some more cantaloupe and of course more sunflowers to finish out the bed. I already have tomatoes in this bed and on the back side of it I'm putting in tall zinnias um, to finish it out. Okay. Sorry, I just wanted to share. This is the seating square from Square Foot Gardening. Um, and it has a little tool so you can go in and there's a chart that comes with it that tells you, you know, what you can plant, the different colors for spacing. It really takes all the guesswork out of gardening. Such a great tool. Um, I can link it in the description. I bought mine off of Amazon. I don't know where else you can get it. Um, I haven't seen it in any of the garden stores or anything like that. Um, I can also link the book. The book is fantastic. It's a great resource if you're getting into gardening, particularly if you're doing raised bed or container gardening, because it will show you just how much you can plant <laughs> in that space, because you don't want to leave these big gaps in your beds. You know, when you have paid for good soil and all this stuff, you want to get as much as you can out of it. So it does that. I love this tool. I can't believe I waited so long to actually purchase uh, one of these before I would kind of map it out and I would use string and this is just so much quicker and easier. So this is definitely one of my favorite garden tools. The next one is one, actually the next two are ones that were gifts from my son. And this is the Gorilla Grip. It's very thick kneeling pad. I love this. I have some of the cheap ones like you can get from Dollar Tree and stuff, 
and I can't really use, I can use them like to sit on a bucket, but as far as my knees, I need this kind of thickness and I love this thing. Um, I, I can link this in my, you know, in, from Amazon um, in the description. Like I said, this was a gift, but I love it. <laughs> and if, you know, getting down is painful for you, it's the way to go. The next thing is my garden knife. This is probably my favorite. Next to my, I would say this is actually even more favorite than my, Fel, than my Felco snips and things. They're different tools, but I love this. I use this thing all the time. I love that it has an orange handle because I'll set it down and I can always spot that orange handle. I will link this one as well. This one is the A&M Leonard. Um, the company was established in like eight, I think it's 1885. And this is a horticulture tool and so from the supply company. I love it. <laughs> love this tool. And um, that was, I got that, I think he got me that, I think it was last Mother's Day because he was asking me, what do you want? And I was like, I really would love this. And it, they're not very expensive. And I prefer that to just about anything else when I'm in my raised bed. You can weed with it, you can harvest with it, you can sow seeds with it, you can cut open bags with it. It has a knife component, a serrated edge. There's just, you, there's just so many things you can do with it. So I will link those if those interest you. So on the same bed where I just planted, using the square foot gardening method, I planted those bush green beans in the very front. I'm going to do some um, beneficial flowers. I'm going to end cap with the same sunflowers that I've been doing in the other bed. So the flowers I'm planting, I'm doing a couple of varieties of calendula by Botanical Interest, and I'm also putting in some borage from botanical interest and these are great for the pollinators to draw them in um, the calendula has medicinal purposes that you can use to make some salves and things like that if that's something that interests you so i give you an update on my cold stratifying things that i did these were my original two these are the blackberry lilies you can see they're coming up i need to transplant them out um, the second batch i had uh, this is, um, half of this was yarrow and half of this was echinacea. Uh, echinacea can take up to 28 days to germinate. The yarrow, like, a few days after I took them out of the fridge, they're popping up. Then up here, I finally got marshmallow root. That one is sprouted. This is a bunch, two different milkweeds. And I'm still waiting on my lavender this was the vera lavender but it can take up to like 28 days so cold stratifying totally works <laughs> and i'm so glad i did that and that I'm, I'm just learning so much more and more about that particularly with a lot of these herbs um these are also let's see which peppers are these these are my um hungarian wax bell peppers i potted those up and some of my strap uh snapdragon have germinated they came back even after the big debacle with everything getting too hot I have a few tomatoes this is my tomatoes <laughs> out of all the seeds I sowed um, it's pretty pitiful but I've got a few I got a couple Dr. Witchies which I was really happy about that it looks like a couple German Johnson's um, so yeah and then those are all my hot peppers I haven't potted those up yet I do, some of these are holy basil and some of these are echinacea, so I think more chamomile. You enjoying the weather, Lucy? You like sitting in the sun there, sunbathing in the grass, eating grass. This beats the heck out of the dog days of summer, don't it? Say yes, ma'am. I live for days like today. Yes, I do. Uh-oh. Hey, my girl. My sweet girl. Yes, ma'am. You're my sweet girl. Oh, belly rubs. So this was later in the evening of that same day. 
um, it happened to have been my mom's birthday so I had went with her for the day and had a lunch and we went to the local nursery and stuff so here I am direct sewing honey boat um, uh, I think it's like a butternut kind of squash and then I did just plain old butternut squash and I also did in some loofahs on the end on the other side I actually have some Cherokee tan pie pumpkins that I've planted and they've already come up and so I'm excited and hopeful that I will have a pumpkin trellis thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one bye